Kwa, good morning to you. It is Friday, the 4th of August, 2023. The year is running so fast and so are many ambitions. And so are those who are doing the good work, like Cavendish University, Uganda. Now, guess what? Next week on Thursday, their 12th graduation ceremony will be happening. And we'll be having more Ugandans entering into adulthood and entering into the job uh, market, looking for how they can benefit and how they can contribute to building this great nation. This morning, of course, I'll introduce myself first. Welcome to Breakfast Meeting. Victoria Baga is my name, and I have with me the Professor John Mogisha, who is the Vice Chancellor of uh, Cavendish University, Uganda. He opens, also happens to be the Professor of Health, Planning, and Management. He's here with me this morning. A very good morning to you, Professor. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. More Ugandans are joining this uh, very large pool of, um, of unemployed youth who are looking for jobs. How do you feel about that? Well, it's a pity, but mm. we need to prepare our graduates better. Sometimes I tell people, I say, show me a very brilliant graduate mm. who has very good skills and uh, generic skills, critical thinking, uh, responsibility if you want, communication, uh, entrepreneurship, and mm. who is unemployed, mm. and there's no one. Are you so serious? We, yes. So we can do better if we train our graduates better. Uh, unemployment is not as big mm. uh, as we are talking about it. What we are seeing is a reflection of mm. uh, a wrong education system, mm. training That's that true. focuses on uh, irrelevant curricula, and of course, lack of focus on the current job market uh, dynamics. Well, I don't think he can better, ex I, I think I certainly agree with you. We we'll have a wrong reflection of a wrong education system. But let's now speak to what Cavendish University has done. We'll start with uh, understanding when was it established, how long have you been in the education system of Uganda. Tell us more about Cavendish University. Thank you very much. Cavendish University of Uganda has been here since 2008. Um, it came in with a new brand with a new focus, um, also to address the challenges of the time mm. uh, in a slightly different manner. Mm. We look at ourselves as an institution that is set to inspire, to inspire and transform learners to become employable, to become entrepreneurial, and to become ethical leaders. Mm. Now, emphasis is on inspiring and transforming. The moment you realize that you are providing transformative education, then everything changes. It means you think about pedagogy, the methods you use in teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. You think about university processes and systems so that they actually can transform the learners. You think about communication within the university in different ways, diagonally, you know, uh, vertically, horizontally. Mm -hmm. Because everything you do, including your, your own etiquette, dress code, you aim at transforming the learners to become better. Mm -hmm. and, and this transformation is not just about knowledge and skills and competencies. It's also about passion. It's about disposition. It's about mindset. Mm -hmm. It's about self-mastery and belief. It's about teamwork. It's about uh, the thinking that they can go out there and add value to themselves, add value to their families, add value to their communities and add value to the world. How is Cavendish different from other universities? If you're to uh, rate the scale, what you do different? And I know with uh, these new modern, uh, uh, new era uh, universities, if you compare them with uh, the, the old traditional universities, and for a Ugandan who's watching from, let's say, all the way in Kabarode, where I come from, who, who is struggling to accept that, look here, we're in a different era, and this is why maybe universities like Cavendish are addressing issues that are now speak to this generation and the way we understand. They may, be, they may be a bit, you know, stuck there in their old traditional ways. How is Cavendish different from other universities? I'll tell you three main things. Mm. Uh, we are different in many ways, but three main things which are critical to teaching and learning and to mm. transformation process. Mm. One is what we call student centricity. Universities are only places, by the way, a student goes in and struggles to read, you attend lectures, they give you tests and exams, and if you fail, you repeat, or you go away, or, and if you pass, you continue. We don't do that in Cavendish University of Uganda. Mm. Students are accompanied throughout their journey uh, within the university. And so 
we have things like student academic support. Mm. We are probably the only university with peer tutors. We identify students who are uh, a, a, a or A grade and uh, we train them and uh, um, facilitate them to support other students. So students have got uh, peer tutors who, who help them. Mm. Uh, we also do lots of remedial classes uh, and do personalized teaching to help the students. Mm. Uh, this happens both online but also uh, in face-to-face -face situation for those who are doing contact classes. Mm. So that is student centricity, making sure that our students are not abandoned along the way. Mm. They are escorted throughout the journey. That's why our pass rates mm. are very high when actually we take relatively struggling students because our, many, many of our students are from the DRC mm. students. They are struggling because of language mm. and, and, mm. and a different background education system. Mm. And so because we escort them along the journey, uh, they get transformed and they become very competitive by the time uh, they are in their final year. So that's one. The second one is technology-enabled learning. Mm. I know you know that everyone knows mm. that Cavendish University is probably the only one, one of the very few, not more than two really or three, which did not shut down during the time of the, of the shutdown. It's because we have a learning platform that we had already installed way back uh, before COVID-19. Mm. And so our students are exposed to what we call technology-enabled learning. We have distance learning students, those study online. We have weekend students and contact students. But these also have what we call a technology-mediated hour. Mm. They are assigned learning platforms even if they are studying in the contact, they are the contact classes. And so there are some coursework which they do online. There are some discussions they hold online even when they are doing the contact classes. Mm. And there is some creativity and innovation that we want uh, to happen online. Mm. So technology-enabled learning uh, is another another factor. Now, the third one is focus on the 21st century skills. Exactly. You see, failure to get jobs, failure to be entrepreneurial, failure to fit in the, in, 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 in the world of industry is not because you lack technical skills and competencies. Mm. No. Largely, it's because many students don't know how to communicate. They cannot examine things critically. So, things like critical thinking, communication skills, um, uh, create skills to create high, high levels of partnerships and sustain mm. them. Mm. These are the skills that we focus on, and they are generic skills for all students, regardless mm. of their program of study. Mm. So we focus on those generic skills, skills for 21st century, and uh, those three factors mm. make us, I think, very unique. Of course, we are very... Uh, uh, we, are, we are a very international university. Our students come from over 35 different countries, and we are probably the only ones in this country, the only university in this country. There are many other things that make us unique, but those three, I think, are critical to the transformation process. Why is it that us as Uganda, we are failing? Because these are things, really, that we're looking at as a 21st century generation, mm -hmm. 21st century skills, uh, te te technology-enabled learning. These are things that are being appreciated by other countries, but if, if you're to compare enrollment for Ugandans mm -hmm. and the others who come to Cavendish, even when they don't understand the language and they come and say, let's go and do this. Mm -hmm. why, why, do, why do you think that there is that diverging point? How can we help Ugandans also appreciate these things? There are many factors. One of them is resistance to change. Even universities with technology, I know we like to talk about technology, uh, that this is expensive, so many universities cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. But even the universities that actually can afford technology, uh, you find they are resistant to change. People will say we are used to the yellow notes, we are used to doing things in this way, and so they are resisting changes because they are, their professors cannot cope. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, our students come from a background uh, <coughs> where they are not using technology. Primary schools, secondary schools, mm -hmm. some are upgrading mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. colleges and technical institutes, and they have not been used, uh, exposed to technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they are coming to university, you find they are actually panicking mm -hmm. if you tell them uh, that technology is, is very important. When I'm addressing our first year students, I tell them, you know, when you are going to primary school, you have, uh, you have your, your, your exercise books and a pen and a uniform. Now, a smartphone or a laptop is your exercise book. It is your pen. You need it 
for learning purposes. It's mm -hmm. now you have a whole library with you in a smartphone. Mm -hmm. You have a whole library with you in a laptop. So now you need it. It's like your uniform. You can't go to class without a uniform. Mm -hmm. So you need this. Mm -hmm. But you see, in secondary schools, the, the background is different. They are told, don't hold even a phone. Many schools don't allow children to have phones. If they find you with a phone, they, you are actually expelled. So parents don't buy phones for their children because they will cause them to be ex expelled. But in the universities, we are telling them, you actually need a smartphone. Mm. And we teach them how to use the smartphone for teaching and learning, but also for innovation, for understanding different opportunities. There are many opportunities out there. Mm. So that's why I said that there is unemployment which is over-exaggerated. It's because of lack of knowledge of the opportunities available. Mm. There are so many opportunities available, including scholarships. Uh, I challenge young lecturers, I, I tell them, show me where you have been looking for scholarships. And when you guide them, six months, somebody has a scholarship for a PhD, for a master's degree in a very good university. So we can, we can use technology better. And I think Cavendish University of Uganda is there to make a difference in that space. And, 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 and that's a good point to make. But then I'm also going to, to bring in another one. You know, when you speak of international universities, the ones that use a lot of technology now, innovations, they fear that maybe it could be expensive. You know, they fear that maybe the, 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 the not so privileged may not be able to afford this tuition. What would you say? Is Cavendish University an, an expensive university? No. When you look at our tuition fees that are free and available on our website, mm. and you compare with several universities, now you can check the tuition fees of different universities. You realize that ours are comparable. In many cases, even lower. But lower for some reasons. One, we have got sponsors. Uh, we are sponsored by Marifa Education Holding. Mm. Um, which is uh, an organization that is out to reduce development gap within Africa by supporting higher education. So that is one. But number two, we also make it easy for students. Mm. Uh, we offer scholarships of different types. For instance, we have what we call academic merit scholarships. Mm. Um, if students have above 12 points, but they have three principal passes at A level, they come and do our, 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 our assessment exam, mm. and when they pass it, they actually uh, enjoy the academic merit scholarship for mm. their three years of study or four years, depending on the duration. Mm. That's one. But we also have some other scholarships, um, uh, depending on, uh, on, on participation in, in community service or in the sports. We also give discounts, actually. Those who pay early. They are, they, are, they, are, they are given a discount of 10%. Mm. Uh, if you refer another person, you are given a discount of 10% for one person, so 20%, 30% if there are, are more. And the reason is simple, by the way, in, in economics. Um, if the cost of training one student is 100 million, uh, if the cost of running a university is 100 million and you have one student, so one student will have to pay 100 million. But if you have 100 students, mm. they will have to divide it. Mm. So in other words, if you get more students, the unit cost reduces. That's, mm. the, that's the economics of it. Mm. Which is why we tell our students, if you refer others, the cost goes down for you. We give mm. you some subsidy, but generally you benefit because the overall cost actually comes down. You're practicing what you're teaching. So we are practicing uh, <laughs> what we are teaching. And students have been doing this. That's why we, in spite of now the reducing numbers, of in, 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 enrol in university enrollment almost throughout the country. Mm. For us, we have been growing. Mm. Um, I think since uh, 2017, we have expanded from 1,600 students to now over 4,000 students okay. in just only 23 university programs. Mm. Mm. If you find universities that have got over 4,000 students, they will tell you we have 85 programs, we have 100 pro academic programs, which means that the, the cohort size is very small of a program. Mm. But for us, we have only 23 programs and we boast of over 4,000 students. Well, let's speak These to things work, mm, they work. I know, yeah. I know. Mm. Let's speak to the, the, the ones who are skilled, the ones who know how to use technology that are joining the market. The 12th graduation ceremony that will be taking place, tell us about the theme, tell us about the event, and why this theme? Yeah, the theme uh, is the academia industry collaboration for increased employability, entrepreneurship and innovation. Mm. We are focusing on academia industry collaboration mm. for a number of reasons. One, high cost of university education. Parents sacrifice. And so they want their children to be able to get jobs mm. when they complete. And there's no way you are going to 
to, to make the students, train students who are employable without working with the industry. Second, to be able to become innovative, to be able to become entrepreneurial, because they can also create jobs of their own. I've been checking um, our, our tracking uh, study report. Between 30 and 40 percent of the university graduates from Cavendish start their own jobs. 30 to 40 percent. They start their own jobs. Mm. Um, which means that focus on entrepreneurship is actually working. Mm. And even when they get opportunities for other jobs, they say, no, let's, let's concentrate on what we've already started. Mm. They, they, they do business startups and they're able to, to, to run on their own. Mm. So we are, that's why we are focusing on industry um, academia collaboration. And the person, we have a commencement speaker on that day. And we have none other than Mr. John Bosco Carissa, who is the, uh, the CEO mm -hmm. of East African Business Council. Uh, so he's the person who will be speaking about the need to collaborate with industry and the private sector. And I think universities have got to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, generally, the graduation is on. We are in Hygia. Mm -hmm. Our chancellor, uh, His Excellency Dr. Uh, Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will be coming as usual. Um, and I have talked about the commencement speaker, which uh, we always have a commencement speaker, a speaker every year. Our guest of honor, because of the theme, is none other than um, Honorable Dr. Monica Musenero Masanza, who is the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, mm -hmm. just because of the theme uh, that is focusing on academia, industry, collaboration, uh, employment, entrepreneurship and innovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, as, we, as we conclude, I want you to speak to the, the uniqueness. I know we talked about the uniqueness of the university and what you offer, but also the special features that come with the university. I know mm. you have um, uh, a diverse uh, a student body, mm. but then just to converse, cause the reason is why I'm, I'm saying converse, because I know, I know my grandmother in the village will hear about Cavendish and will say, well, they're a good university. They seem to be having good stuff. Who doesn't want to have a, 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 a child who is innovative, who is entrepreneurial and can start their own thing? But then again, doctor, I'm going to use this opportunity because the, the professor I knew has done the expert, done the research. You know these things. We do them, we know them, but we just not use them. We, we, we do the research, we have the reports, but we're not using them. Uh -huh. How, what is so special about Cavendish that they should come and come to Cavendish University? Yeah, thank you very much. This is a very important question. Recently, I was invited to speak about um, the factors to consider in choosing the best university for your career. Mm -hmm. And I surprised the people when I said, in the university, you're not going to get a degree or a diploma, mm -hmm. only. There are many, if you get only those papers and go, you have not benefited from university experience. You are, you are seeking to gain more than those. Mm -hmm. And so what we offer in Cavendish, one, is a very rich, diverse student experience because your, your son or daughter will interact with mm. people from over 35 different countries. And those are networks. And no wonder some of our students are working in Nigeria, they are working in the Gambia, they are working in Kenya, and they, are, they come from different countries. They are working in South Sudan from different countries. Mm. That's what we offer. Number two, uh, I have talked about student centricity. Our mm. success rate in terms of passing are very high because of the academic support that we give the students mm. and creating uh, teams of students that study together, creating peer tutors, and so even the team teamwork skills are, are very high because of, of, of the kind of academic support that we give. Mm. That's another thing that you, that you will benefit from. Mm. But the third one is technology-enabled learning that gives you a great deal of digital skills. Mm. Today, whether we like it or not, the world is changing. It has actually already changed. So uh, the digital skills are important. You can't run away from them. You hear now courts operating virtual sessions. Mm. Uh, you can, many people are working now from home. So you have to have technology and to know how to use it. And there is no better place to ensure that your student will get out of the university when they have huge amounts of digital skills mm. than Cavendish University, Uganda. Mm. So those are some of the things, student centricity, digital skills, and of course, I have mentioned, focus on the 21st century skills, which are critical mm. to modern employ employability and also entrepreneurship. Professor, as we conclude, as the experts in the academia, you, you mentioned something that, that hit home. 
the, the levels of unemployment are a reflection of the wrong education system. Mm. Could this be time, as you, the experts in the academia, we speak of maybe a revision of our, of our education system? Yes. This is the time. Uh, many university have moved on, uh, universities have moved on and moved on in terms of, of teaching and learning methodologies, in terms of pedagogy. Mm. Um, we use lots of Socratic questioning, critical thinking skills, we, uh, use of case study method. We are no longer using the traditional, of course there are in many universities, traditional lecture method where somebody comes and stands on a podium and there is a huge class in an auditorium and then the professor begins splitting, you know, talking. Mm. That has long changed in a number of universities, uh, especially in Europe and in the US. Mm. It is still dominant here in Uganda and in Africa, in Africa but yeah. not in Cavendish University of Uganda. Mm. So we teach using the case study method. We expose students. We have uh, a very good balance between in-class and out-of-class experiences. We bring industry. We partner indus with industry in, ter in, in terms of teaching and learning, so we get industry practitioners to speak to our students in class and we take our students actually to the industry mm. uh, as part of their formation and, and, and development mm. so that we give real skills that, that are actually necessary. Mm. So um, these are some of the things that will help to conquer unemployment. Problem is not a lack of jobs. Problem is the complaint that, uh, that even when graduates get into the jobs, the they don't know, they don't know, what, they don't to know do. what to do. Yeah. And others are actually doing the wrong thing. Mm. Mm. So this is the gap that we strive to, to bridge mm. as a Cavendish University of Uganda, and we have been successful. Professor, your last remarks. Uh, I want to appeal to universities to emphasize three things. One is what I have called student centricity. Let's avoid making universities lonely places for students. Mm -hmm. Student centricity, accompanying students throughout the journey. That's point number one. Point number two is building digital skills base for the students. The world has changed. If you are running a university and you don't have things like technology mediated hour, your students, you don't have a learning platform, your students are not taken through, are not given any digital skills, you are not training them to fit into this world. You are not. And thirdly, but most important, let's know that universities are places for transformation. We are seeking to transform students into responsible, into employable, into entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. uh, value-adding uh, citizens. And so it means that everything that we do in universities, ranging from pedagogy to culture, to university processes and systems, to dress code, to the teams that we form, to the whole university experience, this should be transformational in a way. It should seek to transform the learners mm -hmm. in terms of their passion, in terms of their self-mastery, and confidence in terms uh, of, their, of, the, of, the, of their commitment to excellence and to add value to this world. Universities are places of transformation. And so if we do not aim to do this, we will not achieve it. And we will have done, uh, uh, we will have betrayed the cause for which we are established. Cavendish University of Uganda has not betrayed this cause. Well, thank you so much. Professor John Amogishai is the Vice Chancellor, Cavendish University, Uganda, speaking passionately about education of this nation, great nation, not just here, but the world over, like he said. They're, 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 they're helping students from just beyond our own borders, and that's a great thing. But then also he's a professor of health planning and management, and I take home with me one of his insights, self-mastery. It may not only be applying to just that new generation that is going into universities, even us, by the way, who have gone through that system, who are into uh, jobs that need us to use technology to catch up with the 21st century, which may actually force us to catch up with it or leave us behind. So maybe this is a time you could actually visit them and even do an upgrade and keep yourself update on what is happening in the world of the 21st century, update yourself on technology, but then also very importantly, self-mastery. Victoria, guys, my name, good morning. <laughs>